Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part three of the cellular automata tutorial. And now before we get started, I'm just going to admit that I made a small mistake in the first lesson. Uh, in the first lesson, I told you to use this self.setSize method in order to set the window. And in truth, if you played around with it at all, you might have discovered that that's not actually what's happening. This 600 and 600 aren't really being set to the window size. In fact, the window size is 640 by 480, which is the default size of the window class. So I'm going to delete that self.set size. And instead, I'm going to do what I originally should have done, was put the 600 and 600 inside the constructor here. Now, I had put that uh, in the self.clear method. I wanted to just to illustrate the methods that came with window. And I did something that I normally wouldn't have done. So apologies for that mistake. I will put the corrections on the website as well as on YouTube. So uh, any comments or anything else about that, more than welcome. All right. So last lesson, we created this game of life class here. And we just initialized our variables. We generated the cells, but we didn't display them yet. And we're, we're using one for a living cell and zero for a non-living cell. And we're creating about 40% of the cells on the screen should be alive at the beginning. Later on, we'll take this 0.4 and we'll change that value uh, into something that we can adjust. So we can get, you know, a different, we can adjust things more easily than just hard coded value. Okay, so let's actually take these cells that we've generated and let's draw them to the screen. And to do that, we're going to use our draw method down here. And in this draw method, I'm just going to copy, I'm actually going to copy these two for loops here. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because we're still just looping through our array. Uh, we don't need this here. Uh, so we should just have these two. Now, at the moment, our grid is 600, or our grid itself is 30 by 30. Our screen is 600 by 600. So we have this 30 by 30 grid with ones and zeros. And all we want to do every time we loop through to draw it is we just want to check if the cell that we're currently looking at is a one or it's a zero. So if self.cells row and column is equal to one, then I actually want to draw a square there. Now I'm going to go move this over because we're going to want some more room here to actually see what's going on. So I, this, this square right here, it's set up to draw a square in the middle. I'm going to adjust this square in just a minute, but the only thing I'm going to remove is actually these coordinates. We're going to create coordinates outside here and using that we're just going to plug them in. Okay, so we're not going to change this. Keep it here. Don't delete it. So if the cells uh, row and column are equal to one, that means we're going to draw something. So that means the cell is living. So if the cell is living, I need to create a square at that location. And our cell size, when you come up here, is 20. So the, the size we're setting for cell size is 20, which means all of our squares also need to be 20. But they also need to match the current location that I'm at on my grid. So I need to use row and column, and I need to use cell size in order to get things to line up correctly with the grid. So let's start with row. And I'm going to say row times self dot cell size, and column times self dot cell size. OK, so what is that? Well. I'm going to put a comment here, and you can delete this later if you like. This is the if row is 0 and column is 0. So the first time we go through these loops, that would be 0 and 0. 0 times 20 and 0 times 20 is 0, 0. Now, that matches this coordinate right here of the draw index method that I'm using. So the next coordinate needs to match this one, but it still needs to just be 20 by 20. So the next coordinate is going to be the same row, but the column now is 50. But in our case, we want to move by 20. So this is going to be row times self dot cell size and column times self dot uh, cell size. But I want to add on one more. Uh, I'm going. I'm moving one more cell. So this will be uh, plus self dot cell size. And the next one, the row here 
it needs to be moved. So I'm going to say self dot cell size plus self dot cell size, and nothing happens with the col uh, the column. So that's just the normal self dot cell size. And the last one, this is the top right corner. That will be self dot uh, cell size plus self dot uh, cell size and column times self dot cell size plus self dot cell size. And I'm going to bump this out a little bit. Normally I wouldn't do this, but uh, I think this helps you see things a little better. So what do these correspond to? Well, the first is going to be 0, 0. The second would be 0, 20. The next would be 20, 0. And the last one is the top right corner at 20, 20. So these are the coordinates that I'm looking at here if row and column are 0, 0. And then as row and column change, this is going to adjust and it's going to draw the square where we want it to be drawn. Now I can go ahead and I can bring this out and I can get rid of these coordinates and all I need to do is just go ahead and put this right in there and it will draw exactly what I want. All right. So now that I've got that done, I can come back over here and I can run it and we get this nice screen here, 600 by 600 of all of our living squares. And if I want to adjust the size or something, all I need to do now here, say I want to make 50 by uh, 50 by 50 squares. I do that and notice my grid gets a lot bigger. So I can, I'm going to adjust this back. Maybe I want to adjust it, yeah, let's say five. Okay, so I want to make a very tiny grid. So our very tiny squares on the grid. Now that's a lot, a lot more is being run through your graphics card or your processor in this case. And it might end up being slow depending on how fast your computer is. I'm going to keep this at 20 for now. And we'll just leave that like that. Uh, also, if you came in and you adjusted this value uh, from 0 0.4 to something else, you notice I adjusted it down to 0 0.2. So we have a much more sparse number of living, uh, living cells. I'll bump this back to 0 0.4. All right. So now that we got everything drawn, it's actually time to look at the real cellular automata and how everything is run. All right, I'm going to pop on over to this graphic here. Now, the rules here are pretty simple. We're going to be looking at this center living cell on each one of these. And this is from each step through uh, the, the life of these cells. So this is step one on the left and step two on the right. and You'll have as many, many steps as you let the program run. But in these, these are just uh, simple examples. So we've got our nine cells, with the center one being alive or not alive. And in this one, because it is lonely and has no neighbors, that cell goes away. In the next cell, it has too many neighbors, overcrowding, and it will go away. In the third example, if there are exactly three living neighbors, then it will come alive. So out of all the possibilities from zero to having eight neighbors, only if it has three neighbors does it actually come alive. Now, if it has two neighbors, that is just enough for it to stay alive. Okay? So if you have one neighbor or zero neighbors, you, you die. If you have two neighbors, you stay alive only if you are already living. If you have three neighbors, then you come alive. And if you have more than three neighbors, then you're overcrowded and you die. All right, so that's, that's pretty easy. Uh, the rules are extremely simple. We just need to now code them. Okay, so let's take a look at how we might code them. And I'm going to create a method here. And I'm going to call this method run rules. So pretty simple method. Now when we run the rules, and this is the, the odd thing, is we can't run the rules on the same grid that we just drew. I can't run it on self.cells. The reason is is because if I start changing cells, killing, and, and killing cells as I go through the grid, 
the first cells that I'm changing will affect the next row and the next row and the next row. So coming back here, for example, if I went through this grid and I went through and said, all right, this cell has one, two neighbors, so it stays alive. This cell here on the bottom right only has one neighbor, so it dies. Now, if I try to come up here, this cell will no longer be born because I just killed this cell down here. So what we have to do is we have to run all the changes on a temporary grid. So we take all the changes we made and we add that to a temporary grid, and then we take that grid and we switch it back to the self.cells grid. So to do that, I'm going to create a new grid called temp. And in this temp grid, I'm just going to I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did actually up here. I'm going to copy this one more time. But instead of using self.cells, I'm going to use temp. All right, so temp just does that. Now, I need to find a way to find out how many neighbors this cell has. So I need to f I need to be able to look at this guy and say how many neighbors does it have. Now that there should be a pretty easy way to do it, but really you just gotta send in the coordinates for each one and grab each value one by one. And it's a little bit difficult because you need to start thinking about, well, if the cell is on the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen, then I can't obviously check the cell to the left or the right of it because I'll be outside the bounds of the array. You also, like if you're at the top corners or anything like that, you're going to be checking above and to the left. So instead of doing the, that in here, uh, checking everything, it actually will be a little bit easier for us to create another method that does all that work for us. And that method is just going to be called uh, get cell value. And all that's going to do is it's going to return a 1 or a 0. It's going to return the value of the cell if that cell is actually alive or not. Meaning if it's off the screen, then I can't, I can't check it. If it's dead, it'll return a 0. If it's alive, it will return a 1. So to do that, I will say if, and I'm going to be passing some values in here in just a minute. I'll be passing x and y which are, actually let's pass in, we'll, we'll stay here, row and column here. So if row is greater than or equal to zero, okay, and row is less than self.grid.height, okay, and if column is greater than or equal to zero and column is less than self.grid.width. So if all of those things are true, then I can go ahead and access that. So really it's just saying, am I on the screen or am I off the screen? And to do that, we just return self.cells and row and column. Otherwise, I return zero, okay? So that's all it's gonna do. It's just gonna return the value in here. Now it could return zero here. It could return zero here. We don't really care either way. And up here, what we're gonna do is we're going to use this to take a sum of all the values that are around that. So for example, this cell here would have a sum of zero because it has no living cells. This cell in the middle will have a sum of four because it has four living cells. And this one will have two, and this one here will have three. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna say our, I'm gonna say cell sum is equal to sum. And now I can go ahead and I can use this, uh, this method in order to call these one by one. So I'm gonna create this array here because a, a sum requires you summing over an array. And I'll do self dot get cell value, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, let's see row and column in here, and then I'm going to copy this a whole bunch of times. Well, technically I'm going to copy it eight times. And let's see one two three four five six seven, and there we go. And one two three four five six seven. Okay. 
All right, and there we go. So what I need to do in here is I need to then adjust these row and column uh, variables in order to get all of the things around the individual square that I'm looking at. So row, uh, let's say row minus one, and that means column, I'll put column, nothing there for column at the moment, minus one, minus one. So that this here is row minus one, and column stays the same. So I'm looking at this top square here, and then row minus one and column minus one is going to be here on the left, and so I'm just gonna go around in a circle and get each one. So this will be row stays the same and column minus one. And then row is plus one and columns minus one. And row is still plus one, column has no change. And once again, row plus one and column plus one and then column plus one. And notice I'm doing the same thing here. I'm spacing these out just to make it easier to see. And when you're done, you should have three subtractions in row, three additions, three subtractions in column, three additions, and then two where you haven't changed the value of row and column. So this gets the sum of everything that is surrounding the cell we're currently looking at. All right, so I'm actually going to stop it there and we're going to come back to this later. We're going to put the rules in and then I'm going to show you how to switch things over so it's animated. We're also going to talk about how to change the frame rate so that we can we can see it slower or faster or however we want. Okay, so I will see you next lesson. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave it on YouTube or on the website. Thank you.